fruit and vegetable intake. How many servings per day is optimal? To help answer that question, let's take a look at this meta-analysis of 26 studies that included data for 1.9 million subjects. So first, what's optimal for fruit and vegetable intake, which is what's shown here. We've got the hazard ratio of total mortality or all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis plotted against fruit and vegetable intake in servings per day on the x-axis. And note that one serving was 80 grams of either fruit or vegetable. So when com compared with a hazard ratio of one, when the shaded gray region is either completely above one or completely below one, we have a statistically significant association. So first, we can see that less than two servings of fruits and vegetables per day is associated with a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk. And then as servings of fruits and vegetables uh, increases past two servings per day, we can see that all-cause mortality risk is significantly reduced all the way up to intakes of 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. So what's driving this association? Is it fruit, is it vegetable, or a com combination of both? So first, let's look at what's optimal for fruit intake. And again, we're looking at the uh, all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis, now plotted against fruit intake on the x-axis. So for people that consume less than half a serving of fruit per day, so less than 40 grams of fruit per day, that was associated with, with a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk. And then as fruit intake increased up to about three servings per day, we can see lowest all-cause mortality risk. And then although risk looks like it starts to increase with higher intakes of fruit, six servings of fruit per day was still significantly associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. All right, what about vegetable intake? So again, all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis plotted against vegetable intake and servings per day on the x. So for people who consume less than 1.8 servings of vegetables per day, that was associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And then for greater than 1.8 servings of vegetables per day, we can see a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk all the way up to eight servings of vegetables per day. So based on this meta-analysis, it seems that 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day, that may be optimal uh, in terms of health. But what about intakes greater than 10 servings of fruit, fruit and vegetable per day? Is that optimal? And I raise that issue because here we can see my average daily fruit and vegetable intake, and this is since July of 2018 through September of 2021, so the three plus year period, uh, over the last three plus years, my average uh, fruit and vegetable intake is about 2,800 grams per day, which equates to 35 servings per day. Now, I've uh, introduced how I track this. Uh, I've been tracking um, macro and micronutrients since 2015. In 2018, I had the idea to uh, tr track individual food amounts. So that's how I know how much my uh, average intake is every day. So uh, at the low end of my range, I've consumed uh, eat still even higher than the meta-analysis, 27 servings per day as indicated by the black arrow on the bottom there, but then as high also as 40 servings per day. And note that each of these data points is the average fruit and, fruit and vegetable, average daily fruit and vegetable intake that corresponds to a blood test. And uh, I've uh, fully introduced this approach in, in previous videos. If you're interested in that, uh, there'll, there'll be a link in the right corner. So how, how does this 35 servings per day um, uh, separate into fruit and vegetable intake, just like the meta-analysis? So here's my average fruit intake over that three plus year period. And we can see that my average is 15 servings per day. And uh, with a low uh, end of my range being 10 servings per day and a high end of my range being 19 servings per day. So still greater than the meta-analysis. All right, and then because 35 servings per day total fruits and vegetables minus the 15 from fruit, we know that my average daily vegetable intake is 20 servings per day. At the low end of my range, 14 servings per day. At the high end of my range, as indicated by the red arrows, 28 servings per day. So again, I'm higher than the meta-analysis data for both uh, my fruit, vegetable, and total fruit and vegetable intake. So is 35 servings of fruit, fruits and vegetables per day optimal for health? So uh, to address that, no, as I mentioned, each data point uh, is the average fruit and vegetable intake that corresponds to a blood test. So if this amount of fruits and vegetables, 35 servings, is bad, neutral, or optimal for health, we'd ex expect that to be reflected for correlations with big picture blood biomarkers. So uh, that's what we're gonna get, a, gonna get into here. Uh, correlations for my average daily fruit and vegetable intake versus the big picture biomarkers. And again, if you missed uh, the guts of this approach, again, that'll be in the right corner. So first, what are the big picture biomarkers? Just to quickly review that. And they include glucose, which should be an anybody strategy aimed at uh, extending healthy lifespan and potentially longe longevity. There are three markers of kidney function, four markers of liver function, all the major lipoproteins, um, the major immune cells, including neutrophils, lymphocytes, lymphocyte percentage, and platelets. 
red blood cell related uh, markers, including total red blood cells, red blood cell volume, so the MCV, and then the red blood cell distribution width, RDW, a, a marker of inflammation, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and then the overall biological age score with Levine's phenoage and aging.ai. And note that over this three plus year period, I had at least 10 blood tests, uh, which in this case would be for lipoprotein A, and as many as 17 blood tests. So for most of these tests, I have 15 to 17 uh, blood test measurements that correspond to the uh, dietary data for fruit and vegetable intake over that period. So what's significantly correlated? How does fruit and vegetable intake compare against these biomarkers? So here we can see that a higher fruit and vegetable intake is significantly correlated with lower glucose, with lower neutrophils, uh, and uh, with lower creatinine, which are going in the right direction because each of those variables increases during aging and relatively higher levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, whereas the percentage of lymphocytes is positively cor correlated with fruit and vegetable intake, and that's going in the right direction because lymphocyte percentage declines during aging. So uh, for fruit and vegetable intake, we've got four biomarkers going in the right direction. Now, conversely, a higher fruit and vegetable intake is correlated with a higher ALT, the liver enzyme ALT, which is going in the wrong direction. Relatively higher levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk and lower red blood cells, which is going in the wrong direction because red blood cells decline during aging and relatively lower levels are associated with also an increased all-cause mortality risk. So we've got four going in the right direction and two going in the wrong direction. That net score for the effect of correlative effect of fruit and vegetable intake on my blood biomarkers or these big picture biomarkers is plus two. Now note that with a p-value uh, for statistical significance of zero, less than 0 0.05, that means that five out of 100 uh, uh, comparisons may be false positives or one in 20. So five divided by 100, one in 20. So here we're looking at 22 comparisons, so we can expect maybe one of them or around one of them is a false positive association, or sorry, correlation. So with that in mind, when accounting for false positive correlations, it may not be net plus two, but net plus one. In, in other words, one of the four green correlations may not be a, a real correlation that may be a false positive. So it could be net plus one or at best net plus three. So maybe one of the red uh, correlations is actually a false correlation, a false, false positive. So it would be four green and then only one red, so a net of plus three. Now note that if the net correlative effect was overall negative, so more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than in the right direction, I'd aim for an overall fruit and vegetable intake that was below my average intake. Now conversely, if, if my net correlative effect was zero, so the same amount of biomarkers going in the right and wrong direction, I'd shoot for my average intake. But because the overall net score is positive, so at worst plus one, at best plus three, that suggests that a fruit and vegetable intake that is higher than my average intake, but not my, but not my highest intake, I still have some correlations going in the wrong direction, may be optimal for systemic health. So that would indicate somewhere in the 35, which was my average, to 40 servings per day range. Now, this data doesn't indicate whether fruit or vegetables and or vegetables are driving these correlations. So just like the meta-analysis divided their data into fruit and vegetables, but also separately fruit and vegetables, let's see how that compares for my data to see what may be driving these correlations for the combined fruits and vegetables. So first we're looking at correlations for my average daily fruit intake versus these big picture biomarkers. And just as a quick aside, the fruit intake, my average daily fruit intake that corresponds to this blood test data is shown on the right. So what's going in the right direction? So again, we, a higher fruit intake, a higher average daily fruit intake is correlated with three biomarkers going in the right direction, glucose, neutrophils, and the percentage of lymphocytes whereas two biomarkers are going in the wrong direction. So higher, fruits and uh, higher fruit intake is correlated with lower platelets. That's going in the wrong direction because platelets decline during aging and relatively lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And again, lower red blood cells. So we've got three going in the right direction, two going in the wrong direction. That's a net score of plus one. And when accounting for false positive correlations, we, again, we can expect maybe one of these would be a false positive. Uh, it could be a net score of zero at worst or a net score of plus two. So that suggests that uh, at least my average intake, since we're going from a net score of zero to plus two, but not my maximal intake. So somewhere in between 15 to maybe 17 servings of fruit per day may be optimal based on these data. Now note, now note that I can test that by um, changing my fruit intake. Now for this dietary period that's corresponding to my blood test on Monday, so that started from my last blood test until this blood test coming up next week. So that's about a two month period. I'm currently averaging about 14.6 servings of fruit per day, so I'm close to my average, right on track, pretty close to on track with uh, this prediction based on, the, based on the data. 
All right, so what about vegetable intake? So correlations for, for my average daily vegetable intake with the big picture biomarkers. And then again, as a quick aside, uh, I've, I've listed the vegetable intake that corresponds to this blood test data over the past three plus years. So if you're interested in the data on the right, uh, check it out. All right, so what's going in the right direction? So a higher vegetable intake, a higher average daily vegetable intake is correlated with lower LDL. And I've already go gone over whether relatively higher or lower LDL may be optimal based on my biomarker data in a previous video. So that'll also be in the right corner if you're interested. So uh, lower LDL may be optimal. So uh, in my case, so uh, vegetables being correlated with lower LDL, that's going in the right direction. So I've got that as green. Conversely, a higher vegetable intake is correlated with higher VLDL, so very low density lipoprotein, and that's going in the wrong direction. Uh, and I'll also link to why VLDL, higher VLDL may be bad. I have a video on that, so if you're interested, also right corner, check it out. So we've got one going in the right direction, one in the wrong direction. That's a net score of zero. And again, accounting for potential false positive correlations, it could be a net of minus one at worst or at best plus one. So that would suggest that somewhere close to my average intake, 20 servings per day of vegetables, or somewhere in the 19 to 21 uh, range, may have a net neutral effect on my biomarkers. So to test that, if I deviate uh, far from that range, I'd expect to see uh, potential changes in these blood biomarkers. Or if it's a real neutral effect, meaning if vegetable intake at lower intakes, but also potentially somewhat higher intakes, have a net neutral effect on my biomarkers, we'd expect to see the, the amount of biomarkers going in the right direction be the same as going in the wrong direction. So to test that for this blood test coming up next week for the past about two months, I've been averaging 14.4 servings of vegetables per day. So we'll see how that affects the biomarkers, the net systemic biomarkers uh, going forward. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.